Hello, thank you. Eric here. Okay. And the question was... Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the concept of the new album, White Darkness, and the ly lyrical side of it? Uh, the, uh, I can't tell you so much about the title track, because that's dance lyrics. I, I wrote uh, three lyrics on this one. It's... I don't know what to say. It's a kind of personal lyrics about, you know, human emotions, feelings, things going on, relations, and whatever. It's free to interpret them any way you want, actually. So uh, I'll leave it with that. Okay, but... I can tell a bit about the rest. For, for me it was... Um, <clears throat> the whole white darkness thing is, is for me, it's actually a way to uh, describe some kind of um, a, a depression state uh, for a human being when... Uh, when someone lose um, kind of uh, the position in his, his reality by kind of being uh, cast aside a little bit and, and trying to get back on your feet and all this. And I find myself often in this time revert to a state where you didn't really care. You turn off all your emotions and just kind of exist. You go to work, you do your stuff, but it's, you're not really turned on in, in the sense that, that you feel and think and, and, and be creative. Kind of a depression, but... Uh, I, I see it more and more that, that people kind of just go on living their lives, not doing anything about it. And for me, this I find a name for this state of mind, which is white darkness. It's where you live in, in this kind of... You see really no light at the end of the tunnel. All It's just kind of a... It's, it's a mess, but not so dark and deep that, that you cannot get out of it. It's more like uh, you don't really have the, the power you need to, to, to get your life in control. And... Um, some of the other lyrics are also about personal struggle, trying to get back on your feet and, and find a purpose in life. And uh, <clears throat> specifically, there are some some science fiction also on this. Uh, the song "One Way Ticket" is is kind of related to the theme, but this one is is uh, I write about uh, a, a fictional man who who is this uh, really diehard Christian who live alone completely and have his boring day job and his routines, and he is this extremely careful guy that one day uh, all goes wrong uh, and and he just completely snaps and sell all his stuff and just get a one-way ticket to some of these uh, cities of sin like Las Vegas or whatever and do all excesses known to mankind drugs and, and all this and just uh, have this kind of a suicide thing going on where he do all this that normal human beings do a little bit every now and then, maybe not the hooker thing, but <laughs> but the rest, you know? And then he just kind of completely indulge himself in all the sins known to mankind and, and just completely kill himself. And in the end, there is no God for him, no heaven, nothing for all these years of, of faithful service to, to the Lord, you know? And this was kind of a vibe that I get that I think sometimes people just snap. They go out and do extremely weird things. And this guy, he snapped because of his extremely hard religious beliefs and just took a complete 180 turn and, and did all this uh, that was totally against his own will or whatever, his own saying. And I, it, was, it was just a story I made up in my mind. And it was, it was kind of a... It fitted that song in a way because I, I, was, I was getting a bit tired of, of whining about myself and all this. I think I can whine about someone else. <laughs> if you ever considered doing a cover album with uh, Nightingale, what songs would you have on it? Oh, if I can choose, for me personally, definitely uh, a Sabbath song, a Blue Oyster Cult song. We had that in mind for a couple of years ago, uh, in fact. Uh, we, we had it in plan for the what later became the Knife Overture album. In yeah. fact, we, we, we had plans to do some personal recordings of favorite songs or whatever. And uh, we did some demos, I think, of it. So, so a Sabbath song or a Blue Oyster Cult song for me, it would be nice. They, I think they could create some of the mood that Nightingale stands for. Yeah. I think the original idea there was to make like a, an additional EP where all the members played all instruments and sang the lead vocals on their own song because we are one of the few bands that can pull that off without bragging too much. And I would have done um, a rainbow song called In the Eyes of the World, which is very personal to me. And uh, my brother, Dog, would do uh, a song from a band called the uh, Nuts, Only Nuts. And uh, the drummer would probably have done uh, an Ultravox song, 
called Dancing with Tears in My Eyes. But it was all this, we didn't have the time really to pull it off and make a professional recording. And it was, I made a demo of my song, and I know these guys made demos of theirs. And it was just a time thing. We didn't really have the time. It felt more logic to start working on White Darkness than to, I mean, cover things are, are in, in this way, like an, their own release. I think it's, it's pretty cheap. I, I have a cover album coming up now for kind of a, uh, to fill out the playing time of a re-release. And I think that's the perfect thing. You know, you have some old stuff there, label wants some new songs. I think I cannot really write new songs because this project is dead. Then you can pick a few songs and make them like this project in terms of sound and tuning and all this stuff. And, and pick songs from the past and, and make a kind of a cover version where you feel that the original is, is completely different which is what I like. You pick a good melody and then you completely turn it around. Uh, and I think Nightingale could do a very good cover uh, album. But the problem, I think, is that the songs that we would choose would be really extremely good in the original version. And we would have a problem to, to add anything new to it and make it interesting. It would just be like put together a compilation CD for the fans and say Nightingale recommends these bands would be cooler you know because if we had to sing it and play it we would always be like oh but i cannot sing that high we have to take the key down and then you die because that's the that's the rules and uh you know it, it's all these um you cannot do some stuff you know the fill-in have to be exactly the same but maybe you know and so i think we would kill ourselves making a, a cover thing really we play some age of sanity covers in the live set and, and that, that will have to be enough that you're producing some finnish bands can you Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Actually, what what um, what will happen in the near future is that I will work with uh, two Finnish bands. Uh, I think it's Omnium Gathering or something like this. Got. Got Herung. I don't know this name. It's a little bit too. Con and Battle Lore. It's, an, it's another Finnish band. And I will actually just mix the records. They will all um, take care of the musical side themselves, and I will make it sound fat as fuck. And that's pretty much what I do these days for a living. I, I mix records only. Uh, I just finished the um, one of the most uh, anticipated death metal releases of the year from Hail of Bullets. It's uh, it's a super group with members from Pestilence and Gorefest and Asphyx and these. And it's it's out on Metal Blade, I think, sometime in May. It's really, really a good death metal album. Probably one of the best of the decade because it's more back to the roots. And it's not this old school because the guys uh, try to be old school is because that's what they like. These guys <clears throat> are all over 40 years old and they know their shit from the early days. So they just play it the way they like it. And that's that's what I like about this this record. And hopefully the, the, the Finnish guys uh, record well and have good songs and all this and there will be some success. Are, are you singing also on the new Frame Shift album? Yeah, I, I guess I am. <laughs> um, this guy also went into some kind of uh, problem with writing songs. Uh, he was he was making auditions, and just for the hell of it, I sent him um, uh, a song with like my own version of, of this audition track, more for looking for uh, new connections, you know. And then he already decided that he was going to use this Belgian woman called Magali Luiten or something like this, who, who sing on Arian. And then he said, but I like your voice so much that we will actually try to make you a part of this record also somehow. And exactly how, it's, it's, not, it's not finalized. But, but he sent me demos when he write a new song. And I think now it was, I don't know, three or four months since I had a new song. And I know he's having uh, trouble writing material, which is absolutely natural and normal. He write a lot of stuff, this guy. So I will be the singer on this record if he ever finished the writing. <laughs> That's all I know. Okay, that was the last one. Thank you guys, Thank you. and have a great show. Yeah, kitos. Kitos. kitos.